You have to be present for the amiobolus. And let's just say you get that started, right? There's the patient in the room next door who's ostomy bag busted. Now it's seven o'clock. After you dealt with that other patient with the, you know, with the, um, with the AFib, with RVR, now you gotta go take care of the ostomy patient. Now you're late punching out because you had to take care of all those things, including update the note you already wrote on that patient that went in with AFib with RVR because now you have to write about this episode. And now instead of punching out at 7.30 or 7.27, you're now punching out at 7.56. And even though you have done everything you needed to do, you are now met with a question from your manager as to, well, what's going on? I noticed that you punched out late. And it's like, well, yeah, I had to stay back and do all of these things. You know, I mean, you just need to really work on your time management. How? How? Did I tell the patient's heart to act funky? Did I know the ostomy bag was going to bust? And things like this happen on a regular basis. This is not just a one-time occurring incident. It may not happen AFib with RV or ostomy bag, but different things happen. Patients fall. And if you're a nurse or you work in healthcare, tell me two things that always happens at the beginning of the shift or right at the end of the shift. The patient either falls or the patient starts complaining the chest pain. Okay? Oh, never fails. Those two things always happen. There was a time when I went to do my last rounds. There was a cute little lady I had. I took care of her all day. I went to do my last set of rounds. I looked on the... I was like, where she is? She's not in the bed. Honey, I looked behind the door. Nana was on the floor. Nana, how you get on the floor? You've been good all day. It is now 6.57. Why are you on the floor at this time? You know what that means? I have to stop what I'm doing. I can't go give a report. I now have to page the doctor. I have to, you know, get help to get her up and get her back in the bed. We have to do a neuro assessment. I have to get vitals. And depending on if she hit like her head or if we, even if we don't know, we got to send her for a CAT scan. Like all of these things can happen. So how y'all putting time management on me when in fact time management sometimes isn't the issue time management as a matter of fact for me is not even a real thing like i'm not don't talk to me about time management please until y'all get yourself together <laughs> okay now in the icu i would say it's a different thing slightly you have a little bit better a little bit more better control over your time management because you only have two patients but even then, things can go crazy. You can have two patients crashing at the same time. It has happened. Time management goes out the window. There's nothing you can do to help that situation. So that whole time management thing, I'm not buying into it. The other ways hospitals be gaslighting nurses is when they're short-staffed, sometimes intentionally, they always want for nurses to not tell the patients and the family members that we're short-staffed. So I remember talking about that on TikTok and that video went viral because I'm like, oh, so you don't want me to tell them we short-staffed. You just want for me to carry all the burden and take all the weight and take all the jabs and hits coming at me from the family members and from the patient rather than tell them the truth. Oh, so you want for me to look incompetent. You want for me to look like I don't have my stuff together. You want for me to look as if I'm taking a long time to come in and assist this patient getting changed or getting their medication or stopping the IV from beeping. You want for me to take all of the blame because I'm not supposed to say that we're short-staffed when in fact you guys knew we were going to be short-staffed and you did nothing to fix it. Not even hire an outside agency to send nurses in. Not even offer a bonus to get nurses to come in. Not even allow nurses to split a shift and say, okay, you take the first half, I'll take the second half so that way we have coverage. Not even give us a resource nurse. But you want for me to take the blame when we're running around like chickens with no heads on and this family member is calling, this patient is calling, another patient is trying to climb out of bed and the patient's wondering, where's my nurse? What am I supposed to tell the patient? Oh, you know, I'm sorry. I just can't get myself together. It's just too busy. And I, I, you know, I'm sorry. It's just all on me. No, it's not all on me. And I'm sorry. Some people might say, well, you're not supposed to burden the patient with the issues of the hospital and what's going on behind with operations. So, but who's supposed to take the blame for that? Me? 
Y'all just want me to look, y'all just want the nurses to take the fall for everything. I'm not taking the fall for everything. If y'all did not have enough people on that schedule, I let the patient know, listen, it's going to take me a little bit longer. I apologize, but we are really short staffed. What else do you want me to say? Because when I walk into that room, if the patient has been calling and it takes me a little bit longer to get there because we are short and I have all of these patients that are acutely ill, if I take a little bit longer to get there, who do you think the patient is side eyeing? Me. Who do you think when that patient gets that CMS survey or that hospital survey talking about the service that they've received? Because also healthcare and nursing care has been turned into a service industry to where we're getting rated on how quickly we responded to the call bell or how pleasant was the nurse when she came into the room. So when I walk into the room and the patient been buzzing that bell for the past 50 minutes, but I was busy with the other patient who couldn't breathe and there was nobody, no other nurse could go help that patient or we don't have a resource nurse, what y'all want me to tell that patient? Oh, sorry, I'm just incompetent. I'm not doing it. If we're short, we're short. Everybody going to know. And if you are watching this, if you are a patient that has experienced that, if you're a family member who's had a loved one in the hospital experiencing that, y'all need to call y'all state representative. Call y'all Congress people. Call whoever it is representing the state, the city, and tell them that the hospitals are out of order for having the nurses short, which in turn means poor quality of care. Everything is not the nurse's fault. We do not have control over certain aspects. We just don't. And I will say 98% of the times, maybe even 99, nurses are doing the best that they can to take care of you. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some stragglers, okay? And I've seen some nurses who are not so great and who do not prioritize patient care. But I will dare say that most nurses prioritize their patients before themselves. We have nurses that don't go to lunch. You have nurses that don't even use the bathroom because all they're thinking about is their patients. Even when a nurse is sitting at the nurse's station, because this is another one, because a lot of people, including other members of the healthcare team and visitors and families and things like that, like they'll walk by and they'll see us sitting down and they think, oh, we're just chilling and not doing anything. The way my brain, the to-do list that's in this brain right here for all of the patients I'm taking care of Y'all don't even know what are some of the configurations I'm in my mind trying to say, okay, well, I know this one has this coming up. This one had pain, but this is the only pain medicine I have to give. I have to wait until this nausea. Okay. I need to change him. But if I change him now, I got to change the dressing, but should I wait? Like it just be a whole thought process that goes on in our minds that when we're sitting still, our minds are busy working. And a lot of people I think don't understand that the other gaslighting that's been happening lately is the fact that we don't have CNAs or techs barely but yet we're held to the same standard so how is it that nurses need nursing assistance to get the job done like we need our nursing assistance we need the nursing assistance we need the techs we need y'all but I stated in the previous video, a lot of you all are finding other things to do, which I can't blame you guys, right? But how does the hospital accept that quality, expect for quality care to be rendered to the patient when we ain't got no help? We don't have any help. Like, what is going on? The other part of it, too, is here's what the hospital will do, because this is a situation that happened to me recently. And I'm going to use this as a learning point for specifically new nurses because a lot of um you know the ogs y'all already know so i worked recently and after getting a report one of the patients that i had he was on si watch right i don't want to say the word because i don't think youtube i don't want to get like flagged or anything he was on si watch like <laughs> watch right he you know possibly he was going to harm himself or anything like something like that so I get a report on the patient, day shift gives me a report, because remember I'm working nights, and then I hear the charge nurse saying, oh my goodness, we don't have a sitter for the patient tonight. So I'm like, what y'all mean y'all don't have a sitter? Oh, they never sent a sitter. I called staffing and staffing said, rotate the text. How can we rotate the text? We only have two texts on the 